This morning we're going to go over a basic craniotomy setup um, for the instrumentation. No, not that one, just this one. So we're going to go over a basic craniotomy setup and the instruments used to get from the skin down to the brain. I thought it would be fun instead of just listing the names of the instrument to actually talk you through how a crany would be done and what instruments are used to do the crany. So we're going to start with the skin. We have to open the skin and what we're going to use is a 10 blade knife. This is a 10 blade. It has a little wider um, blade than the 15 and it's a little bit deeper. So this is a really nice knife to cut through the skin. Um, this is also used in general surgery to open the belly. The 15 blade is smaller and that's going to be used for the dura along with the 11 blade which is used in laparoscopic surgery but it's also another option to open the dura. So we're going to start with the 10 blade and once we make our skin incision we're going to have to tamponade the bleed from the skin edge with rainy clips. So the rainy clips are loaded like this. You take the rainy clip and you actually compress the instrument by pulling it open. It's kind of reverse action of all the other instruments we use. And then when we want to place them, you're going to place them on the skin flap, go ahead and release, and then kind of rock off the instrument like this. So now you can see it's tamponading the skin edge. And we're going to place rainy clips all the way along the skin edges through the entire length of the incision. Then when we're ready to take it off, we could simply put the rainy clip applier back in and then squeeze it down and then off it goes. Then what we can do is we're going to use our bovi and this is a bovi here and this is hooked up to electric cautery. The blue button is coagulation, so it's just going to burn and coagulate all the blood vessels. And the yellow button is cut, so that's going to cut through the tissues a lot easier than the coagulation button. So when we're just bovying bleeders, we're going to use the blue button. But when we're going to cut deeper into the scalp, we're going to use the yellow button. So this is going to be the bovi that you see um, in most of the cases. The tip's a little bit different. This is an insulated tip and it's a little smaller. We call this one uh, an insulated tip or an ENT tip. Lots of people have different names for this, but this is the one we're going to use in neuro for the most, uh, most of the time because the normal tip gives us this entire length of active um, tip. So it's very easy to hit the sides or hit something we don't intend to. So we want to make sure that our tip is just that far exposed. And because it's um, coated it's not going to stick like some of the other tips too so this is a good one to use so I'll put that back then we're going to want to scrape away the galea or the aponeurosa of the skull and these are called elevators and at this point you're going to push on the tissue separate the muscle layers separate the connective tissue so you're all the way down to the skull I do not have a drill but this would be the point where we're getting ready to do the drill and you could use the drill and make your burr holes um, but once we make the burr holes we would still want to scrape some bone away potentially and we'd use a curette this is called a curette and this would scrape in the burr hole if we want to make sure that we're all the way down and then sometimes you want to widen the burr holes and you'll use something like this called a kerosene and a kerosene ranger will let you go down into the burr hole and just bite bone away very easily so you can expose and make the hole larger if you needed to or if you need to do more decompression in a spine case or in a crany you can use this to remove bone. A larger version is going to be this guy. This is a ranger as well. They have different names but I'm not going to go into them and it's held like this and you go ahead and go ahead and bite bone so you can grab the bone like this and pull it away and bite it and there's a number of sizes and angles that lets you accomplish that. Then you're going to turn your flap so there's another drill bit component that will change and then we can actually turn the flap and then we have to negotiate that flap off the dura and we use this instrument right here this is called a Penfield 3 and it has a, a nice edge to it so we can get under the bone flap separate it from the dura and this is what we're going to use to turn the flap to get the actual bone off the skull that we cut. There are four different Penfield instruments. This is called a P1, P2, P3, and P4 respectively. 
The P1, the cup portion of it, is very similar to the curette, and you can curette out burr holes. You can um, kind of use this to protect drills in some situations, and you can use the back side of the P1 kind of as a tamp, so you can um, put some hemostatic agent on the brain or in some bleeding area, you can press down on it. But you can also do that with the two. Here's the back part of the two, which is the true tamp, which you can put wax on, and then you can actually wax some bleeding bone. We like to use the freer for that. Oftentimes we'll put wax on the end of a freer, and we'll put wax on the bone and tamp it in with a freer. The three, like I said, has a nice curve to it, so you can use it to remove the bone flap. The four is a lot smaller, and it's really used for dissection, so you can tease, find structures away from themselves with the P4. These guys here are other versions of elevators, and you can use this similarly to the P3 and kind of peel the bone off the dura. These guys are also used um, the Woodson is kind of longer, so we use it more in spine, but the dental has a little tamp, so you could put wax on the end of the dental and then kind of tamponade some bleeds in the bone. But what's nice about this end of the dental, you can actually go under the burr hole all the way to make sure that no dura is stuck. So when you try to turn your flap and you use the craniotome, you're not actually diving into a plane that you don't want to be in. So you want to free up the burr holes before you do the, the rest of the craniotomy. And the dental is the instrument that we're going to use for that. There are a variety of sections we're always going to use. There's 14, 12, 10, and 7 French suctions. The larger the number, the larger the diameter of the suction. Typically we start with 12s. 12s are a good size. They're going to let us suck up all the bleeding and um, some of the bone dust and when we do a lot of the irrigation away from our field. If this isn't working or getting clogged, we can upgrade to the 14. But once we get inside, there are other suctions that we can use. They're, they're brain suckers um, that have different tips and different sizes and they're longer angles to let us negotiate some of the angles in the deeper spaces. But just on the more superficial layers, we can use these smaller size ones to give us a finer control of the suctions. There are also retractors that we can use, I didn't mention, to pull the skin out of the way. Um, and some of the muscle layers when we're doing our flap. There are four different sizes. Some are straight and some are curved. The straight one is called a Wheatlander. And you can imagine if there's skin in the middle, now I'm opening the space and freeing up the edges. So now I'm just looking at the deeper layer here. There's a curved one, which is called a Cerebellar Retractor in Neuro. And in most of the other services, they just call it a curved Wheatlander or a curved Weedy. So the cerebellar is what we call it in neuro, and you can just kind of let this hang on the head because the, the head is kind of shaped like an oval, so it's not a flat surface, so you want these kind of bends and angles to give us kind of the direct line of where we're going, so the curved ones are better on the, on the head. And then we have smaller ones if we're just doing burr holes as well, so it gives us some options. There are a couple handheld retractors, so if we're turning our flap, we can actually pull and retract the scalp away from the drill, and that's what this guy is used for. This is called a rake. And there's a smaller version of it that's called a sen. So a sen has two ends, a very sharp end, and then a dull end. Then as we look over here, um, you know, before we enter the dura, kind of as we go through the case, I just wanna go over what these forceps are. And there are a number of forceps. There are bayoneted forceps. There is we call this a watchmaker forcep or a jeweler forcep. This is a very fine forcep. It doesn't have a tooth. So we'd use this on the dura. Um, we could also use this on finer structures when we're sewing. Then we have a gerald with teeth that lets us grab something. So we could also use this on the dura to help retract the dura if we need to. Then there's a gerald without teeth, which is just a smooth forcep. We have a rat tooth, which has a tooth, which lets us um, kind of pull on the scalp and we're closing at the end of the case. And then just for skin, we have an Atsin with teeth and you can see there's a little tooth on that guy. Then there are a couple other forceps. These are called tumor forceps. There's a large and a small tumor forcep, which lets us actually grab tumor or brain tissue and then pull it out for specimen. So there are two sizes. 
And then lastly, the, our favorite instrument in neurosurgery is a bipolar forcep. This conducts electricity across the tips, so that's why it's called a bipolar. It has two kind of tips as opposed to the bovi, which is a monopolar. And it lets us um, kind of coagulate anything that, that is in our way that's bleeding. So we can use this on the scalp, we can use this on the dura, we can use this on the superficial vessels of the brain, we can actually use this to dissect brain. So this is our favorite instrument in neurosurgery for coagulation. So now we have to open the dura. Um, typically, I don't have the stitches here today, but we'll place some stitches and we'll use this very fine instrument because the stitches are very small to tack up the dura and kind of parachute it up off the brain before we make our incision. That's one technique to do it. Most people, um, you know, I shouldn't say most people, but oftentimes they do that. Some people don't. It's fine either way, however you're trained. But then you'll make a cruciate incision. Typically you make an X in the dura go ahead and open the dura and then you can use a number of different scissors. These are called um, tenotomy scissors because they have a little edge here and you can slide those under the dura and lift up and complete the cruciate incision and then you could use your stitches again to retract all four corners as you expose the brain or you could even use something like this which is our Metzenbaum scissors and that accomplishes the same thing. Typically they use the Metz but the Tenotomies are another option, and these come in a variety of sizes. There are small ones, large ones, straight ones. Um, so we have options depending on what we get into. When we cut our sutures, this is a really nice instrument to cut sutures. It's the straight mayo. It's a nice, broad, strong instrument, so it'll cut the sutures for us in a, in a nice way. These curved ones are what we kind of use to cut the drapes and place some of our attractors at the very beginning of the case there's a pole that we put in it's called um, oh I'm blanking on the name right now but we put the pole in place um, and we have to cut a hole into the drapes and then we have to throw the scissors away after we it's called a Layla bar after we put the Layla bar in place we're gonna get rid of these scissors because these are technically contaminated and we can illustrate that in another video then we have a number of needle drivers we have sponge forceps and other instruments that we'll talk about as we continue. So now we open the dura and we can, um, you know, now we're looking at the brain and we can do whatever we needed to do. If we're doing um, a subdural hematoma, we would see the blood at this level. We might have to actually cut into the brain a little bit to see um, where the bleeding is coming from, but it's all through this basic crany. After we did the burr holes initially and turned the flap, if it was an epidural hematoma, that's where we would see all the blood and then we wouldn't have to cut into the dura. We could simply do a lot of irrigation. We could bipolar the bleeding vessels. It's usually the middle meningeal artery with the bipolar that takes care of that. Irrigate everything out and put the flap back on and close the patient. Um, so that's kind of the basic crany setup with all the instruments. I just want to go through a couple more of these because they're on the table. This is called a coker. This is an instrument with a tooth and this will be able to grab tissue and retract it up or it can grab some bone you'll see this in spine we'll put this on um, sometimes we'll put this on the spine so we know where we are in the field when x-ray comes in as uh, as we begin our dissection these are alices these are called non-perforating clamps because they don't have a sharp tip we can clamp this directly to the drape and it's not going to put a hole in it so we use these instruments to attach cords and instruments to the, to the drapes on the field. This is called a hemostat and this is a really nice instrument for holding retractors. Over here we brought in an example of what those retractors would look like. These are called hook retractors and we can put this into the muscle or into the scalp and kind of wrap these rubber bands around the Layla bar and then clamp that directly um, to the bar. So it just is another way of retracting tissue if we don't want one of these instruments in the way. So we'll use the hemostats for that. There's a smaller version of these that are called mosquitoes and those are these guys and then we have our rainy clip appliers. So that basically goes over all the instruments in the cranny tray and uh, we're going to end the video there.